Welcome to episode 118 of the Thunder Underground podcast. My name's Trent, this is Jason, and we've got a couple interesting things for you today, I believe. Yes, we've got a uh, potpourri, as they'd say. Potpourri. Yes, I, I use that <laughs> word again. Yes. Oh, and did you know that, like, a couple episodes back, we had Gene Simmons on? No, I did not. Well, I'm telling I you I did, now. but thanks for reminding me I'd hey, forgotten. Hey, yeah. it's always, always a good time to bring that up. Yes. Yes. So go back and check that out if you haven't yet. Tell all your friends. All your friends. Not just some of them. Not just like that one that you always try to dodge. But Tell your important them. friends. Yes. Yeah. And also tell them that we have Scott Lucas and Ryan Harding of the band Local H. You remember them? They had some hits in the 90s. Yes, they did. They've had several albums since then that kick ass. They're still going strong. We're going to have them here in just a bit. We've also got the first edition of us just sitting around talking about music while we're inebriated. Yes. That's going to be interesting. Yes. Well, we kind of did that before when we had Kevin Graham on last yeah. year to do yeah. the Rocklahoma preview. Yes. Because like, that went so long that we became inebriated at yeah. that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't. <laughs> how could you not, you know? Right. Well, this is different. We just, we'll get into that in here. Yeah. I'm not even going to explain it yet. Well... First thing first, a couple days ago, Megadeth announced yes. uh, part of their summer tour. They'd already announced all these dates they're doing with the Scorpions in the fall, but before that, they're doing a headline run this summer themselves. And they're coming our way to Oklahoma. They're playing Oklahoma City at the Zoo Amp on July 8th. They're doing a string of dates. It wasn't real lengthy, maybe 15, 10, 15. Yeah, definitely. So kind of glad we got one. It's a Good metal package and includes Meshuggah and Tesseract and uh, what was the other band? We I, you know what? I'm not even. Gonna, <laughs> I, I I I apologize to this band right now. I do not know how to say their name and I don't know. I don't want to attempt it because I don't want to disrespect them or sound dumb. There you go. But it's spelled L I L L A K A K E. Excuse me. And anyone out there with uh, that knows how it's pronounced, let us know. Yeah. Um, Seen that word before, but I've never heard it or heard them. Yes. So I'm so, not going to comment. You know, we'd like to think that we know everything about rock and metal, but sometimes we don't. Um, I so bet Trevor knows. Trevor would probably know. Once again, we've mentioned Trevor. <laughs> uh, we should have him back on here and help. Us, he can help us out with this kind of shit. Right. But in any case, it's a great tour, a great package. All the metal fans are going to love it. Um, I, I, I'll be first to say that I'm not really a huge fan of Mashuga. Don't really know much about Tesseract, other than that they're super fucking talented. Yeah. And like they play like 102 string guitars, and I have to like get out my calculator and graphs and shit to like listen to their music. Yeah. And that's not a diss at all. That's that's how good these guys are. I know that much. So, um, they you fit know, into the math metal category, yeah, like I, I Meshuggah? Mean, yeah, they, they've got, <laughs> so this package has something for everybody. Um, and, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to have it in our state. And, uh, I'll be there. I know you will be there. So, yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I've never really gotten much into Meshuggah. I don't dislike them. It's just one of those things that just didn't grab me. But, yeah, you listen to it and it's pretty insane. It's just one of those yes. bands that even though I've, seen a million bands in my life i've never seen them yeah so looking forward to it and i remember josh from fist of rage last year after chicago open air talking about how bad badass they were so yes hey I'm exactly a, i'm gonna check them out for sure yeah i mean i i've seen them it's been a while i saw them at Ozfest back in the day i think oh that's right i think 2002 and i just remember like i wasn't drinking then but i felt like i was drunk in the middle of their set because they're just they're so swirling and riffy, and they'll change time signatures and all this kind of stuff. And and I just remember the one thing I did take from that is, I mean, they were just tight as hell. I mean, you couldn't, I mean, just watertight. And I was very impressed with that. Yeah. It would also be cool to see what Megadeth, what kind of set list they bring oh, I know, out. And all I that. know, I can't wait. I mean, they could be anything, you know? True. You'll be happy regardless. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they probably won't play uh, Wanderlust, but I I'm already over it, so. Yeah. I bet they encore with the doctor is calling. <laughs> probably not, Trent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it'll be in the sweltering heat in July outdoors in Oklahoma, but. Why not? It's we're, Megadeth. We're used to that shit. Yeah, we can do it. 
Well, anything else tonight, if you're listening to this the day it drops, we've got... Was a couple different... Sh- no, I think that show that Grind was on with Hell or High Water, I think, might have got canceled. I saw it, the, the page got taken off, yeah. so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But then we've also, like we mentioned in the last episode, this nocturnal winter anniversary show is tonight at the La Iguana here in Tulsa. It's also got Obscure Sanity. It's also got Volition and our buddies in Mr. Rogers' Intergalactic Sexual Experience. Yes. And they claimed at one point this is the last show. We'll see if it is. I don't know. We'll they haven't see. really been pushing that lately, so maybe they're trying to sneak one past us. We know. shall see. Yeah. Let's play some music. Yes, let's. We're going to play this band that we actually, we played them probably this time last year. It's been quite a while, earlier mm-hmm. last year. An album that they had that came out in 2014 or 15 um, called Mar- Marble City Secrets Are Off in the Black. Great album, very diverse. Yeah. But they actually have a new song that just came out here a couple weeks ago, and we're going to play that for you right now. It's called Blue Collar, and this is Be It The Means.
Blue Collar from Be It The Means. That's a band out of Alabama. Like I said, that's a brand new song. Man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, look. You can't go wrong with this band. One, they, they don't sound like anybody. Two, they're badass, which that sounds like, you know, we say that about a lot of stuff, but they really are. That's our go-to word. Yes, it's just like this. It's this brooding, glistening, soaking wet, swampy, like, heavy, soulful, bluesy, like, but kind of evil, just howling uh, rock and roll. I mean, it just, uh, I mean, I don't know. Every time I hear this band, I just, I just go, fuck. You know, <laughs> right? One of those things where I mean, you just shake your head because like this is so good, and you know, these guys need to be like on top of the world. Yeah, you know, I mean, this stuff hey, it needs to be heard by more people. It really does. And, and anything we can do, you know, if 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 you're listening to this right now, go check this band out. I mean, they are they are they are a treasure. They really are. Yeah, that solo on that song is just yeah killer. I mean, like, you don't see you don't see guys using you know you see you'll see somebody use a slide every now and then, but you know he really puts this into you know his arsenal quite a bit and he does it in a unique way to where it never gets old, never gets cliche. I mean, I'm just uh, I'm just lucky I even know this band exists. <laughs> right. Here's the thing: if someone went in like a time warp and grabbed Led Zeppelin, yeah. And then they went into the 90s and grabbed the Black Crows and Mother Love Bone and put the three bands in a room and said, fight to the death. <laughs> and whoever's left can make a, make some music. And there's like one guy left from each band in a bloody fucking heap. And this is what came out of it. it nice. And I thought my description was good. I think you beat me now. I don't know if that even made sense. <laughs> but what you said was they don't sound like anyone, which... I just named three bands, but there's only elements that you get for a second. You're like, hey, that kind of sounded yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. But then it, you're like, no, that kind of sounded like Andrew Wood. Like, nope. And then like all of a sudden you're just like, you can't really even describe it to someone, which yeah. is the best part of it. It's like if if you took a blues band and a metal band, put them together and made them do a bunch of acid. There I don't know. Go. Yeah. That's maybe that's the best way to describe it. Maybe like in Beavis and Butthead where they like stuck on frogs' butts or something. <laughs> right. Get high. But I'm telling you, people, be it the means, all one word, Google it, you'll thank us, you'll thank us, you'll thank them. Yeah, it's tagged here on the description. Definitely. On Facebook and Twitter, so just click on that, follow these guys, pick that up. That There's a video for that on YouTube, which is really cool, and on their Facebook page, follow them on all that stuff. You won't be disappointed. Yeah. We're going to get them on the podcast one day. Yeah, we need to. They're going to... They're gonna, roll through town or somewhere around here it's gonna happen yeah yeah it needs to well let's get into some local h yeah definitely local h came to town here a couple weeks ago we had the opportunity to talk to scott and ryan for just a bit and both cool guys and it was very cool to you know to just talk to them about what they got going on and you know their stories of that was cool about the thing where they took the the album in 2015 out to people beforehand oh, that's such and a they, yeah yeah you know and had pizza and beer with them and that's a great idea yeah more bands should do that yeah we'll get into all that and you know before i wanted to mention before the show we saw my old buddy alan who i haven't seen in a while and yeah. i think it's the first time you actually ever met him yeah I, yeah we've always you know on instagram and our facebooks and we've always yeah. traded stories you know the three of us yeah and i finally met him in person it was great and he's friends with the Plums who were opening up the show. That's right. And they came out and talked to us, and we got to talking, and it was funny. You had some, what, connection to back in the day? Where, yes. You know, you yes. and I guess you and Lance, maybe? They're from Bristow. My girlfriend's from Bristow, and way back in the day, and just how it all, you know, I knew a band from Bristow back in the day. and That's right. It kind of all just came around, and... It was kind of interesting. Small world. Yeah. Really small fucking world. Yeah. So we need to get them on here. We talked about that. Yes. Another two-piece band is like Local H. So, yeah, I mean, everybody knows Bound to the Floor by Local H. Mm -hmm. 
but they've got, you know, they had a few other hits in the 90s, but they've yeah. had so many albums since then. And I always thought they're one of those bands that get labeled in that alternative category, but they don't really sound like a lot of those bands. They've got a real kind of loose garage feel to them, yeah. which I guess you would if you're a two-piece band anyway. Exactly. But so, yeah, I'm just it's cool to see bands like this to just, you know, keep on pushing, keep on going and keep putting out good music, which Local H has done. So anyway, let's just get into this and we'll talk to you when we get back. Definitely. This is Scott and Ryan from Local H. Good. <laughs> Had you guys done Europe recently, or has it been a while? No, this is the first time. Oh, it's the first time ever? Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's like, it was, uh, we were there for two months. Yeah. Hit a lot of places, like 16 countries in two months. Wow. It was a blast. Yeah. So if that's your first time, I mean, were there a lot of, did you run into a lot of longtime fans that have been waiting 20 plus years? Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of that. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I never thought you'd come here. I was like, I never thought we'd come here. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, it's a long time coming. And like, tell me about it. So after a while, I kind of got tired of here. I get it. It took a while. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was great to be here. Now, just be here. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. When are you coming back? It's like, we're here now. Yeah. 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 We'll work our best to years. come back. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a little bit. This is as good as Dead Shows last year. Uh, were there any songs you hadn't played in forever? Or? There's probably something you hadn't played by that point. But. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't have to play on that, so. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you did the other set. That's I, did right. the, I did the opening yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, songs like OK, it'd been a while, you know? It'd been a while since I played that. And uh, Priest Dried Flies was fun to play. I hadn't played that in a while. I enjoyed playing that one the most. Manifest oh, Density, part two. That huh? was a good one. Manifest was fun. Yeah. yeah. Were they, was, did you have to relearn them, kind of, or did you just come back naturally? No, I kind of knew them. Yeah? yeah it was, it's weird, I knew all the songs. Right? Yeah. Nice. Nice. And, and, you know, making all these set lists, is it, is it hard to do old stuff, new stuff, you know? Yeah, that gets a little tricky. But um, it's just a matter of, like, you can't fit everything in. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, we can play it tomorrow. Right. You know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's pretty easy. So is it something you guys come up with on the day of the show? Yep. We like to, before we play. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you write it out or you just go as you go? No, we write or, it out. Okay. Write it out. But I like to look, <laughs> look at the venue and look around and then kind of figure it out from there. Yeah. That's the idea. That's pretty freeing knowing you can just do that and those and the crowd can just be cool with it or not. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not something where it's, you know. A whole tour is the same set every night, like a lot of bands. I don't know how many bands do that, but some bands do. It just makes it more interesting for us, you know? Yeah. And I've noticed you guys post on Facebook and stuff asking what people want to hear, yeah. which I thought's cool, because yeah, most bands fun. don't do that, you know? Yeah, that, that helps, you know? Breaks right. up the monotony right. as well, you know? Yeah. Is there any, like, whoa, I don't know about that one, or you just, you just do it anyways? There's a lot of ones like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And half the catalog is like that. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Well, when you came into this, had you ever played in a band that didn't have a bassist? Was it uh, just natural to start doing? or No, I mean, like I played a in a process. lot of bands that had bass players. There was a band I played in called Sullen that they didn't have a bass player, and that was as close as I got to okay. what this is. But this is a totally different beast, so now I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. So it take a little bit of time to get used to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, like you know, there's a certain foundation you have with a band and a bass player, and then with this, the two piece is just kind of like a, a fist fight back and forth the whole show. You know, like you're just playing with each other, catching up, you know, doing whatever. <laughs> it's fun. Cool. Well, on the the two piece type deal for you, do you prefer a small stage or a big stage? Like, do you feel like? Out there on an island by yourself if it's a large stage. Yeah, sometimes you feel like that. But then you start to like just take advantage of it and just act like an idiot. Yeah. And that's kinda of what I do. I just like jump around and act like a moron. And then, you know, it's it's a different thing. Yeah. But I mean it doesn't necessarily mean one's better than the other. It's just different. 
front. Well, it's like when you got the drums up front. Yeah. It takes a lot of space. Yeah. 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 yeah true. Well, then when you got so much space up front too, you know, it's like how <laughs> you don't want to play too far apart because then you kind of lose the, yeah. you know, the energy. <laughs> But when you guys did Hey Killer, you used the pledge music thing. Like, how was that a good um, experience? Because, you know, I've read some things where some bands didn't like the process or something. But No, it was good. But I've heard more positive things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there were some real fun things that happened out of that, and then there were some real interesting things that happened out of that. But overall, I mean, I can't rest well. in a good way or bad way. I guess <laughs> both. <laughs> we did this thing where we brought the record to people's houses and play them before it came out. Oh, wow. I didn't so we brought like, a case of beer and a copy of the record. And we used to sit around at people's house and bullshit and play the record. Yeah. So that lasted for about two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. By the end of it, the liver was just so swollen. We were like, yeah. Do this <laughs> One night, you just stay up and listen to the record and eat a bunch of pizza, and then the next night, you do the same exact thing. Yeah, so... Yeah. After that, you know, not playing. If you play, you sweat it out, but just sitting there for two weeks. That was brutal. Yeah. Got pretty taxing. Yeah. It was. <laughs> Mentally. It was harder than me on a tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how'd you map that out? Was it people in a certain area of the country, or did you guys go over the place? Whoever, whoever yeah. like, wanted it to happen, we tried to line it up, you know, and it just so happens that, you know, some people from michigan and wisconsin and illinois and a couple other people kind of worked out that it was close the first one we did we had to go all the way to new york and i think that wow. was the farthest we went yeah no, we landed on the east coast yeah. and midwest so, yeah. too bad. so is this something you'd do again in the future well not oh, that man. but i mean <laughs> i mean the, the pledge music thing with yes. other options Just maybe be honest uh, about it maybe later. we'll see we'll see <laughs> But what's the status on that then? A new album? It's uh, marinating. Because it's been a couple years. <laughs> yeah, it's about just, time, but we've really been busy. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. 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 So you have songs written at all? or no. no. It'll be one of those things where we'll probably come off a tour and sit in the practice space for a couple weeks and get it out before we go on the next tour. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you never what about know. the like, concept albums? What do you. What's your what's your stance on that? And what do you think? I like them. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Obviously, he's done them. So he well, yeah, them. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how do you? I'm a fan. <laughs> do you like have the story in your head and write it out that way, or do you just kind of? No, write it as usually it goes? what happens is you'll be writing some songs, okay, and then you'll start to notice a theme happening. And then once that happens, you go, okay, let's follow this, and then you sort of make everything bend that way. Mm-hmm. And once you get to something that you're interested in, then I'll just kind of like putting a puzzle together. You know? but, but the themes usually, you know, it's very rare that you go, I'm going to write a record about that. It just, you start to notice things, you know, and you pick up on it. This will be more for you. Um, I mean, you guys have had several albums since the 90s, but you always get thrown into that 90s band category. Does that bug you or do you care? Um... I just think it's weird, you know. It just it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, you know. Yeah. It doesn't seem like the seventies and the sixties to me. You know, it doesn't seem that cool. Yeah. You know, it's like all oh, the nineties. I'm like, wasn't that cool, dude? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> <So. laughs> awesome. Well, what do you think about? Because everybody's got a different take on Spotify and streaming services. Do you care? I like them. You like them, I mean, because I know you don't get paid much for it, so. You don't get paid much either way, but as long as, <laughs> as, long as people get to hear the record, and, yeah. you know, they, yeah. you know. They, it, 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 it's like, that's like a tool for your tour anymore. It, right. It seems like. That's what I hear a lot, anyways. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, major labels broke the model. Yeah. They, char- they charge people too much for records that they shouldn't have been doing CDs were cheaper to make and they charge people twice as much for them yeah. I mean they fucking killed the golden goose and it's nobody's fault but greedy people Yeah. so it's kind of like where we are right now it's like you know all those people who lost their jobs it's like what the fuck what did you think was going to happen you've yeah. been raping people for so long this is what happened right. you know so now 
problem is a lot of bands get raped, you know. But um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't <laughs> like know what the answer is. Yeah. I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, luckily, we have people that come and they want to buy the records. Yeah. You know, we're lucky. That's all right. That's all right. So you move a lot of them at shows, probably more than you do elsewhere, like on the newer stuff. Oh, where they buy them? Yeah, yeah where the fuck yeah. are they going to buy them? That's yeah, the well, true, yeah. yeah. This is the only way you can <laughs> yeah. buy them unless you order them on our site. Yeah. Oh, be... Or is it Amazon, maybe, if that? Yeah. yeah. So, true. Well, true. we appreciate you guys' time. No problem, yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Man. Appreciate yeah. it. Great question. Appreciate it, yeah. Yeah, Thanks. yeah thank you very thank much. You. Hope you guys Here's enjoy our... the show. Yeah. There you go, both guys from Local H. Thank you to Eddie Applebaum for setting that thing up. Thank you to Scott Lucas and Ryan Harding there of Local H for taking the time out before the show to talk to us. They've got this tour still going. They've got a bunch of dates coming up here in the next couple of weeks in like Florida, South Carolina, Virginia, and then all through the Northeast. So get out and check them out. They're a great live band. That's right. Well, oh, another thing I want to throw out, if you're listening to this the day it drops, Scream Red Mutiny is playing in Wichita tonight, April 21st. Yes. Um, that's right. Yeah, the uh, Champs. That's what it is. I was drawing a blank. Go see Sprout and the boys. Yeah, that's Sprout's hometown. That's right. So I know they always draw a crowd out there, but yeah, check out Scream Red Mutiny if you have not. Well, we're going to get into this this thing here in a minute. Yeah. I don't know if we're calling it drunk talk or we had a few different ideas, but... Hey, we'll see what I end up putting Wasted on the title. conversations? I yeah. don't know. What did you say? Fucked up musings? Yes, no. fucked up musings. How about that? That doesn't flow well off the tongue. Well, they get the idea. Look, look, look it was it was after the... Table talk. Ta- uh, table talk. <clears throat> it, was, it was after the Anvil Night Demon show, and we'd driven back to Broken Arrow from Oklahoma City. It was late at night, and we decided to, you know, we were all good boys at the show, you know, we had to drive back, so we didn't drink or nothing, so we decided to just, you know, have some drinks, throw the microphone on, and talk about random, I don't even remember a lot of this shit, I'm sorry in, in advance yeah. for what I say, right. or maybe I'm not sorry, fuck it, I don't know, but you know what, if you guys laugh or anything, it was worth it. Yeah, I uh, actually went through it all. Okay. I, I had to, you know, to make sure that we didn't say anything that we shouldn't be saying. Yes. And also there was a few spots where there was, you know, like 20 seconds of dead air because one of us went to the bathroom or we were looking at our phone or something because yep. we were drinking, you know. Yep. But anyway, I consolidated it down. And, nice. Okay, good. And I, I, I laughed out loud quite a few times listening to this thing, so okay, I, good. I think people will enjoy it. You know, we're just like you said, listening to music, like stuff like Metallica and Suicidal Tendencies and Weird Al Yankovic at one point. The list goes on. That was thanks to you. I remember that. Nice. Nice. <laughs> well, the thing is, is, um, you know, I, I know I bailed first because I was tired as fuck. Yeah. And I even fell asleep at the table because I know you said there's some snoring in there. So I cut out some of those for you. So some of them are still there. Fuck it, you're gonna hear that. Whatever. Right. But anyway, it's of course Jason and I, and we're joined by <clears throat> JP. Yes. From Egotastic Fun Time Fame. That's right. Get on Facebook, follow that page. Get on YouTube right. and subscribe to Egotastic Fun Time. Yep. He's got a hundred plus videos, and they're all funny as hell. Fucking hilarious. That's what this guy. Is does he brings the humor yes well let's just get into this all right here you go drunk talk or turn talk no 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 <laughs> i'm not calling it that just just roll the beautiful bean footage i need some kid who hasn't wiped his first cum stain off his leg to tell me what i need in my life yeah. back when they had fucking the intros they were like doing some shits you know i can't even fucking move my hand is this way. one of your favorite attack songs of all time it is one of the best solos. Well, the fucking rhythm of it, guitar wise, is like I can't even masturbate like that fast. <laughs> it's like imagine you going. Okay, this is where it cuts back in. Now hold on, I need to compose yourself. 
I, I have to say something else before you cut back in. If that's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, you get that you get that out? <laughs> well, I didn't put it right now. I'm going to edit it before we put it up. No, I'm just saying. Just All fart. squirts get fart. Oh, really? All squirts get edited out. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying is, this is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> As you make there's you could be though. like that woman that sign languages the music. That you could like sign, you could like beat off to the music. Yeah, <laughs> I do it, and I go to though. work, and my pants are red to front. And you, and you, <laughs> and you might disagree, but I think that one of his best solos ever is in the Unforgiven. Well, it's definitely like a thought out fucking. It's a process. Here, it's a here, it's a journey. Here, you know. Well, the solo to Unforgiven is a journey. It's and more I'm, like an epic kind of thing, you know. Like it's not like a thrash solo. No, so it's I, a like fucking. Said, it's, it's telling like, you a story. It's thought out, you know, and it's like huge and like bombastic. Well, it's also got sections. It's like I'm going to do a little lighter here. Yeah, hey, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to get a little harder here. Hey, it's you got know, some sexualness to it. Yeah. And, and we're not talking about fucking Unforgiven 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. No, fuck My all favorite that. one is 5. Of course it would be. <laughs> yeah, Unforgiven 5. <laughs> it's a hidden track after Spit Out the Bone on Hardware yeah. to Self Destruct. <sighs> yeah, and Unforgiven 5 is just, you find out all that old man wanted was just a Pepsi. Just one Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Suicidal Tinsy song that's not intuitionalized? Sorry, I'm institutionalized. <laughs> institutionalized. Have another drink, motherfucker. <laughs> institutionalized. Nobody when I'm hears. Done Jaeger. Deal with it. And put that on the queue. I want to hear that next. You said nobody hears. Nobody nice. hears. Wow, that's legit. Thank you. That's too legit to quit, which is my favorite song. I will say it, and I don't give a fuck what any suicidal tendency hardcore fan thinks. That album is my favorite suicidal tendency album. Art of Rebellion. Art of well, because that's when I got into them, so it holds a special place in my. I life. prefer so, infectious yeah. grooves myself. The play hey. that makes your booty move. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way it is, man. Their cover of uh, "Immigrant Song" is dope. Yep. Bruce Hornsby's Bruce Hornsby's song. That's the way it is. That's just the way it is. One of my favorite songs of the world. The one that Tupac did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing it now. Yeah, Tupac. So I mean, I don't two give James. a fuck. What is this for? Is this just for the next episode? Or no. Is this, or are we just fucking around? Well, the next... We have the next two episodes. I know. Demon Danville, but there will be an... This is what you call ancillary entertainment. If this isn't a train wreck, then it'll be an episode <laughs> coming up in the future. Train wreck, new band name, I call it. <sighs> will it be better than the Amy Schumer movie? I haven't seen that because I know better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Though I like Amy Schumer. Hey, it's got LeBron both, James in it. Both a com- comedically yeah, wise. <laughs> yeah, Amy Schumer, comedic, comedic wise and physically. I'm a huge fan. But I know better. Yeah. Surprisingly, she, it's better than you thought. You know, I thought it would be like stupid yeah. stand-up jokes. But, you know. Well, no, a, she's good. It was she's a well-thought-out movie, you know. Oh, yeah, well, she's real, Well, you know, uh, did you watch the, the latest season of South Park? Of course. <laughs> and it's so they can talk about how women are so funny. Because I love women make jokes about their vaginas. Women are funny. Just a minute. Women are funny. When they talk about their vaginas. Yeah. Here, tell me, tell me a joke about your vagina. It's going to be so funny. <laughs> Did you watch it, Jason? No. Yeah, yeah, dude, you got to watch that shit, dude. Since, since, since I was in my 20s. Oh, dude, you missing out. He says it like we're like... Beneath yeah. him, maturity wise, because we dude, the Park. fucking last um, couple seasons not, okay. of South Park have been so damn good, so damn good, and topical. <laughs> topical, <laughs> you know, like the stuff you put on your your moles and your yeah, topical your South Park oils. No topical cream. Yeah, no. In the last like, couple moles seasons, moles and my oils. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> New band name: Moil- Moils and my what? oils. You're the one that's got fucking zits <laughs> on the side of your head. Holy shit! Thanks. Eat a fucking cock. Thanks. <laughs> hey, you're the one that you're the this one is that started. Cancer. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. He told me. I've got six months to live, so we better get Dave Mustaine on here in the next six months. Jesus Christ. 
That's what you're going to have to be talking to like if you want Dave Mustaine on the fucking show. I guess, you want to be talking about Jesus Christ. Hard. Jesus Christ of metal. The next album. <laughs> <laughs> no, the new season of South Park, dude, they've been going into, they don't do one-off episodes anymore. It's a full-on story arc every Jeez, season okay, now. Yeah. It's fucking great. And actually, the new season that just finished uh, forever ago, that actually fucking, the story arc of this season actually came from the previous season. With yeah. the whole turd sandwich and uh, well, the, turd the whole sandwich, political thing. That, the turd sandwich thing was from like years ago, from the last election four years ago. Yeah, yeah. Then they brought it back for the new election. And then, you know, and they carried that over and then they also mentioned like the Randy being being like he was Lord. <laughs> I'm Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. See, like, you miss now. You don't understand South what Park. we're talking about. Stan's dad in South Park is Lord, the, the, the musician. Yeah, he's actually Lord. You know, because she doesn't really <laughs> exist. <laughs> he just like writes her music and and, and is it. her. And yeah, <laughs> you you got to catch up on South so, Park. That shit's nuts. They've gotten so good and mature. It's I. I hate to change the subject, but I love <laughs> this song. I want to hear it. Okay. Is this Jimmy DeGrasso on drums? Was this the era that he was in Suicidal? I can't remember. I forgot about he that. went from Y&T to Suicidal to Megadeth. Well, was he in, was Suicidal right before he was in Megadeth? Oh, I don't know. If not, it was later because... I know this was still like the, this was still the classic but lineup. But he's just of, been all over the place to like... To Black Star Riders, to Rat. Yeah. He was probably in that stupid Jeff Tate's version of Queen's Rike, like everybody else. Tate's Rike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no shit. No, but when this came out, Mike Muir, Robert Trujillo, and Rocky George were still in the band. I don't remember who the drummer was, though. So, so what, what's uh, what's everybody drinking here? Are you, you got the Scottish Ale? Well, I got a Scottish Ale, that he has a Laughing Lab Scottish Ale, but I'm hardly, I'm barely, I'm just from sipping Denver, it. Colorado, I'm just okay. sipping it like a gentleman because I'm actually drinking two forms of rum. Yes, over in this other glass here, Pirate P Y R A T, not a sponsor of the show, but the should be, should be like cold cock whiskey. And uh, now I'm <laughs> drinking Pirate Rum X O Reserves. And this shit's really good. It's tasty. It's like candy rum. But also, I just tried this 12-year-old Kirk and Sweeney rum, which obviously, which definitely, I'm going to tell you right now, is a better rum. Yeah. But it's less... It's for adults. Yeah. <laughs> it's not for bitches in their 20s. Yeah. <laughs> this is it's for not adults. For bitches at a bachelorette yeah. party like pirate. Yeah, it's got a nice <laughs> rum flavor, but also has a nice adult Drink up, bitches! Yeah. <laughs> Get your Sailor Jerry and your Pirate. So I'm actually going to prefer the Pirate because the Pirate's got a little bit of a candy yeah. finish. And you're a big fan On the of candy. palate. Yeah. I fucking love candy. I, hey, love I candy. like Pirate. I like all rum. I like yeah. shitty rum. Yeah. Well, I like both rums, but this one's obviously a better rum. But because it's a better rum, I actually like this shittier rum. <laughs> because there's drink? no reserve. What are you drinking? Currently, I'm drinking Coney Island Hard Root Beer. Oh, assistant. come on, dude. That's fucking like a Mike's Hard Lemonade, root beer style. You want some Mike's Hard Black Cherry or Hold on, shit? let me find this for you. Yeah, what's the point value? No, that's so shitty. That's like one point. What's the point value? It's higher point than whatever he's drinking. What? With six point, it's the same thing. So you got beer... I can't you got say beer, look what I'm drinking. You got beer quality root beer, and I got yeah. fucking hard ass liquor. This is the mass of fucking alcohol right the here. The mass of alcohol. Rum. This shit's flammable. If I put can put if I put a match in this, it would fucking be on fire. Nice. What's your favorite? Your drink would put the match out. <laughs> What's your favorite song about rum? Is it Daggers and Rum by Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to think about that. Or is that. it a song by Corpaclani or Elstorm? Um, Surely they've got something about rum. Or they have that song called Rum. No, Vodka. That's yeah. never mind. Sorry. Vodka. I like that song. I don't want to work. I just want to drink on this rum all day. <laughs> My hey, favorite. Jason, what are you drinking? I'm drinking shit fuck Michelob Ultra. Because that's wow. all I had left. 
Because we got back too late, I couldn't go get it. I told you you could have another laughing lab from Colorado. Uh, I, I just might after this one. I don't think I've but ever. I will tell you. There's one also thing. a few of those uh, little peach Rita things that your ex-wife left here about two years ago. You might get one of those. No comment. Sorry. Bitch, Rita. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna no palm breeze. That's what it was. It wasn't. Oh pizza. yeah 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 yeah. Well, she got that from her mother from her mother. But I her will, mother was a good person. Yes, I her mother. Yeah, unlike her. Unrecorded. Well, Listen, but, it's Hank fucking three. That's right. But I will say, I had a fucking thing. I had a thing going. I was gonna say you fucked it all up. So thanks. say it. I can't remember. You're talking about Michelob Ultra. Um yeah. Suicidal tendencies. I don't think I've ever ingested a, a single drop of Michelob. Isn't that a seventies beer? This is about. Isn't that what they drink in porns in 1979? It's one very porn. One can only hope. Michelob. What's your porn name? Michelob. <laughs> <laughs> My porn name is Shaft Cummings. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm gonna go on record. Just changing the subject again. Since 1980 hit and country music changed forever. God damn, Tammy, one <laughs> fucking lit <laughs> from the good old days of fucking <laughs> seventies outlaw country. Yeah, I this, love it when country this, music was about suicide. Yeah, now it's about fucking bitches and solo cups. It's yeah. like, look, you're in. Well, it's you're also in, <laughs> you're in the shotgun with a white tank top, looking good with your cut off jeans. No, 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 you that you're sit, talking about the nineties. Nowadays sit, they have painted on, on jeans. Sitting on with an ice cold. <laughs> Don't drink it if the mountains ain't blue. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Well, country music now is about being in a in a fraternity. A fraternity mm. of fucking douche. Yeah, Luke Bryan and fucking. Florida Georgia Line. Oh my Listen, you cut me off. What I'm trying to say is since 1980, Smoke and Wine, the song that is currently playing by Hank Williams yeah. the third, I sorry. is the greatest country song recorded. Probably. Okay. Well, no, yeah, you guys so are fucking ridiculous. We, hold on. We this is a fine it. song, but the best goddamn since fucking country song is Hello Darling. My goddamn Conway fucking 20! <laughs> what year did that come out in the 80s or the 70s? It came in the fucking year zero when Jesus was fucking on the world. So the then it was before 1980, that's what I'm saying. Hello, darling. <laughs> nice to meet you. Right? No, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you fucking break it on down right off the top and say, It has been a good long time. <laughs> It's okay. Insane. We can't do anything with this because we've got these songs going in the background. God damn it! You yeah. look as lovely as you have ever looked! Hey, you remember that Josta podcast where they had songs in the background? He yeah. didn't fucking pay for that. If they, if you get a copyright infringement, I'll pull this bitch down. Alright. Now we're listening to Rob Zombie do a cover of Grand Funk Railroad's mm. classic It's an American, I'm an American band. Yeah, I don't care for that. <laughs> yeah, no. John Five, man, he plays that shit better than Bruce Cooley. Well, John Five plays that shit better than anybody. Now I don't care for that. And also, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Rob Zombie is beyond being part of a country like America. He's he's omni country. He's fucking he's Europe. He's France. He's Canada. Sure, he's a little bit America as well. He's Mexico. So you're but just he's America? America? He's just American world? man? No. So what are you saying? He's the man of the world, or what? I'm saying he's pan racial. <laughs> pan racial. <laughs> a little bit Asian. Hey, you know what I like? That new song called "Bloody Underwear" <laughs> from oh, Six Feet Under. Six Feet Under's "Bloody Underwear." Should we cue that up? Let's not and say we did. Okay, we can cue it up and talk about it. But I'd rather I'd rather cue up. Well, let's just talk about from a virgin's cunt. But whatever. That's not six feet under. Oh, that's Cannibal Corpse. I forgot. Sorry. Listen, what's your favorite fucked up death metal song? Chris Barnes is my favorite rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Chance. <laughs> He's also a rapper. Tom Mariah was on that <laughs> song with Ice T in 1994 and a Tom Mariah's my favorite rapper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. 
<laughs> this shit's off the rails right now. I don't use wrappers anymore. I'm more of a Ziploc guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Okay, let's... Okay, fuck okay, around. The next let's song. get sober real quick. Okay. Yeah. Talk. I don't fucking like this cover. I don't like Rob Zombie. Zombie. <laughs> God dang Zombie. It's like Ned Sheebly. <laughs> God dang <I'm> Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> no, this Rob Zombie cover... It's fine. He do he does covers. That's fine. I think this is a fucking poor choice for Rob Zombie to do a cover of. I think he would have done much better with like fucking Monster Mash or some shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know who else has done a cover of this song? Jackal and Poison. Oh shit! Well, that's a deep cut knowledge it's right not there. Not a good record, is it? What? Huh? What's not a good record? Jackal's great, but I don't really... Poison? I don't know. Well, I'm it's sure both of them Jackal. sound the fucking same like this, because this is exactly how the fucking original sounds. Except for you get a little zombified in the voice yeah. region. I don't care for zombie doing a version of a song like this. It's just not the right fit. Right. And he's probably like, oh, the fact that it's not the right fit is perfect for me. That makes I like, it a fit for Because I like fucking <laughs> shit up and doing it wrong. But no, this is not the right song for Zombie to do. What fucking cover of a classic rock song should Zombie do? What is it? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, he should fucking do... Metal on Metal by Anvil. No, he should do Beth by Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> what about Extreme More Than Words? Oh, fucking Night Demon's playing. Yes. Let's hear your thoughts on Night Demon. <clears throat> I'll well, first off, this is one of the best demon. fucking intros of a fucking modern yeah. classico Nuevo metal band that there fucking is. And it's fucking four notes played in succession. And it fucking works. It gets that fucking mojo going. I feel my balls have tightened just a tad <laughs> since it started well, playing. I'll, I'll tell you. I, 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 seriously, you know... <laughs> Sober as I can be right now, which is not very... <laughs> which is not. <laughs> but Night Demon was spectacular. They were they were legit. They were on point. They had to put together a stage show. I mean, I just... I can't tell you how impressed I was. Yeah, fuck yeah. They're doing... Okay, they're playing this little club, you know, with Anvil and uh, uh, Grave Shadow. And they're a power trio, just like Anvil is. Thing is, is they're way beyond a power trio. They sound more like a fucking nuclear trio. You would think there's eight dudes. Yeah. Dudes! Because only dudes can produce this type of fucking hard rock. You would think there's eight dudes on stage, but there's actually just three. You're saying females can't produce this type of rock? No. I'm sorry, but it's just because you gotta have... You gotta have gonads. <laughs> you gotta have gonads to produce this music. Women can sing it. Women are great at singing this shit. Uh, Heather Michelle from uh, Grave, Grave Shadow. Shadow was one of the best fucking female growlers I've heard in a long damn ass time. Yeah. You're gonna get that. But to you're produce gonna, you're notes gonna, you're gonna... out of a fucking instrument. Full of testosterone, which is my <laughs> urban name. <laughs> <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> you gotta have gonads, and these fucking dudes got s- three dudes, six gonads, and they fucking squeeze the juice out of every one of those nads. Squeezing <laughs> the juice. <laughs> yeah, they wheeze the juice out of them. So we should ask him if. It's a thing that every album now will have a song about the night. Because <clears throat> they had Scream in the Night and now Welcome to the Night. Yes, well absolutely. If you're if you're a band and you're and you got the words night and demon in your uh, band name, you should have a song or two about the night, you should have a song or two about the demon, you should have four songs about both the night and the demon together. <laughs> right. Well their last song was We Are Night Demon. They played tonight. Yeah. But you also wrote a song. 
while we were there. Yes, it's called... Uh, they are the night they, demon. <laughs> it's called the night demon. It's like, we are the night demon. And you're like, oh shit, they already wrote that song. Yeah, they did write that song. <laughs> but you could write the fan fiction version and then... Recorded. Well, there's not they, enough. They could play it when they're like walking off stage. Well, absolutely. Here's the thing: is there's a lot of bands, and there's a lot of fans of those bands, but there's not enough fan music, fan, you know, fans of the music that create music about that band. There is fan fiction. You know, there's people like Star Trek, and they create fan fiction stories about, you know, Captain Kirk and Spock. Go and have an adventure that you never heard of before and probably fucking at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so we should write fan fiction about Night Demon? Write night, they wrote night fan songs about whatever your favorite band is. Oh, okay. Whether it be Night Demon or it be fucking Coldplay. It's like, oh, we are the Coldplay. <laughs> Sucking penis all night hey, long. All day. <laughs> Sucking that penis all day, Coldplay. Fuck Coldplay. <laughs> we well, that'd be one of the songs. The Five Finger Death Punch. We <laughs> want to take it in the cunt punch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I just wrote some fan fiction music about Five Finger yeah. Death Punch. Yes, that's the thing that doesn't exist yet. It's fan fiction music. So, Jason Wood, what's your favorite part about Anthrax's cover of Carry On My Wayward Son? Um, they nailed it. I mean, they really did. I mean, you know, you have to admit it. Well, they did. They did nail it, they and that's the problem. It. Well, I'm just saying. Why the fuck nailed. do they need to nail a song that's been fucking nailed? <laughs> well, it's been because, nailed, like, over and over again in every fucking class of rock station that's been playing for the last 40 years. Bands are recording. They should fucking get the fucking other end of the hammer, take that nail fucking out of the wood, and fucking reapply it in a new way. This is the same fucking song. You can just say this is a live version fucking Boston of this shit. Kansas. Or Kansas. <laughs> you know, you know why? Fuck Kansas. Boston of this song. <laughs> Boston would have done it better than Kansas. I'll say it. Well, but that's yeah, true. That oh, yeah, Kansas. So if you're going to do it the same way, then you're just the copycat. <laughs> that doesn't sound well, like anthrax. I know the anthrax have done covers their own way before. But so, usually they don't. Yeah, but maybe this is uh, maybe this is an instance where it didn't fit or something. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. That song sounds like fucking Kansas live version of the show. They didn't do anything different. They didn't even say, hey, let's fucking take this distortion pedal and put it to a number three instead of a number two and a half. <laughs> That's the same fucking song. They are stealing <laughs> from Kansas. <laughs> they didn't do a single thing different. What's your favorite Anthrax cover of all time? You can't even think. Of God, that's they've, a good done, one. they've done so many. They've done so many. Um, I really like London. I like the Cowboy Thin Song. I think Cowboy yeah. Song. Their Thin Lizzy mm, cover. Yeah, might really. But that be. sounds just like Thin Lizzy. Yeah. See, they even got the fucking organ. The same fucking yeah. organ. <laughs> They could have done a guitar solo instead. Yeah. They could have ooh-ahed that part. Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. Same fucking song. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know why they did it. Did they run out of songs? No, it was just a bonus track on the re-release of the new album. I mean, it sounds great, but that's the problem. It's like, it sounds great, but it sounds just as good as Kansas. I was a huge fan of the uh, Sound of White Noise album with, uh, what's his name, John Bush? Yeah. But the thing is, is that was, I guess you would say it's more commercial version of Anthrax. And I don't know why, I think it's because John Bush's voice is just so, it's nicer sounding. It's like easier on the, the eardrums. It's just very, I don't know, softer sounding. So why, aren't <laughs> they, why didn't they keep them? <laughs> Weren't they, they making money? money? 
Weren't they making money with him? Because they got more fucking radio play with him, I thought. Well, early on. But later on, you know, five albums later, they didn't. And that's yeah, when but they brought it... Joey back because everybody wanted to see that again and they sold way more tickets and all that shit. Yeah, I guess for tickets. Because then you get more classic sound. But you're done with radio time. Radio's over. Yeah. Radio, music, videos, it's all gone. Yeah. But they did really well with that. Did they have like two videos off that album? They like played well? Yeah, they played Black Lodge a lot on Headbanger yeah. Ball. Too. Black Lodge and only. Yeah. I see. Hey, here. it's the guy that film. Yeah, dude. Just that one. Zeus film. Yeah. Isn't every Metallica song that's played on this playlist hey, Black we're, Album? We're back on. What do you got to say about the guy that filled? He failed miserably because we're all fucked. Yeah. Didn't fail now. He's all about that god now. <laughs> Lame. Hey, James, James? All, James is all about it now. He's like, God cannot fail. Or if he takes an aspirin. Because <laughs> his family's version of Christianity was Christian science, which That's is right. has no science at all, which is if you get a fucking disease, you ride that shit out and see what happens. Right. No medicine. Is he part of that? Or is he part of the, well, I believe, but also I'm fucking smart and I don't fucking, if I get a headache, I take an aspirin. Because <laughs> right. I have children now. <laughs> right. I wonder, because he doesn't go into it. Yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna guess he's not Christian scientist, right? Because he's still alive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason's asleep, but the beard is wide away. No, right. <laughs> that shit's doing fucking like hardcore dancing leg kick. <laughs> yeah, this song is great. Fucking uh, God that failed because because James. Was in the Christian science scientist family. Wasn't someone in his family like fucking dying? He well, yeah, didn't do is, shit. Well, he wrote this song after his mom died. Yeah, and she was like fucking going through hell, and they didn't do any medicine or anything because that's what they believed in. Okay. And then he got drunk a lot. <laughs> right. Now what the fuck happened with Bob Rock? Hey who? That didn't wake just now. No. Now Bob Rock in the Black Album was one of the best fucking producers ever. He made that shit sound like a fucking epic goddamn album. Motley Crue style. And he couldn't replicate it. Everything else he did after that fucking sucked. With Metallica. And he did like fucking two or three more albums. He did three more albums. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's just what they were wanting to do. Because he did albums that sounded good after that for other bands. But... I don't fucking get it. Why did they say, hey, Bob Rock, you know how you made our last album sound so great? Don't, don't do me. any of that shit. <laughs> All right. Hey, and you know what? Fucking just... Just go take a break on St. Anger. Don't even fucking show up. Right. We're just going to... Play the bass. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to record St. Anger on our cell phones. <laughs> this is Chris Jericho. Ozzy. Is it really? Chris yeah. Jericho? Yeah. Well, I know the song Livewire. Well, yeah, it's a Motley Crue song. Yeah. They're just doing covers like a fucking bitch. Well, yeah, the, the whole first Fozzie album, all it was was cover. Then after that, they started doing original music. But that was the whole thing. Well, that sounds great. He should fucking sing fucking crew right now. Yeah. He's be- he's 20 times better live than Vince Neil. Yeah, he probably sings all the lyrics and then say, hey, you sing it. Yeah. Now you! <laughs> you sing three-fourths of it, and the quarter I sing will be off-key and out of tune. Now, did you watch that fucking Vince Neil reality show where he got his facelift? Yeah. I saw I, I saw part of it. Was it like an ongoing series, or was it on one episode? I don't want to I feel, remember I feel like it was a couple episodes, but yeah. I might be wrong, because that was fucking 800 years ago. It was around the time that they had got back together to record, like... Something. Yeah, and he's like, good, good, I feel fat. And it's like, well, because you look it, because you are. Yeah. The decision to run that facelift, or whatever they did. And they did it, and he was, God, he was so happy with the fucking end result. 
But they could they could reconstruct his throat, I guess. To sing his own fucking songs. Yeah. If only you could do a throat lift. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what's your favorite type of native song? Uh Unsuccessfully coping with the natural beauty of infidelities. Huh. Nice. That is a good one. <laughs> Too bad you're getting my girlfriend's girlfriend. <laughs> hey, my girlfriend's girlfriend. God, that's a fucking band that's so sad that we don't have anything like that. Yeah. Anything that is like that is like. A cheap version of it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember even back in the day when I listened to Fresh Typo Negative. I also listened to Moonspell, which was directly a band that was, we love Typo Negative, we want to sound like them. And they were good, but not in the same way, in a very European y way. <laughs> and Moonspell's still around, but I don't know what the fuck's going on with them, but they don't sound like Typo Negative. Nobody sounds like Typo Negative. Yeah, Typo oh, Negative. Nice. I listen to the shit out of Typo Negative. And I actually have a piece of art. I, has, I commissioned someone to draw a really cool picture of Peter Steele. Uh, right. Portrait. And uh, he saw it. I showed it to him on another show. And he's like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> Did you draw this? <laughs> and I said... He sounded like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, he sounded just like him in my, in my <laughs> memories. Did you draw this? I did. And I said, Yes, I did. Just kidding. No, I did not. <laughs> because what are you going to do? And then he saw it and he... And I, I watched him sign other people's shit and he just scribbled a little fucking name. And then when he saw my thing, it was so good. He signed his name slowly. Slow, deep, and hard. Slow, deep, and hard. <laughs> Every stroke... Yeah. Was and you can actually read his fucking signature. It says Peter Steele, whereas everyone else has said, just said Pulse Suppleton. Pulse Pulse. Said Nathan Todd Dogs. <laughs> but mine, it says Peter Steele because he was like, oh, uh. <laughs> he's like, yo, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because I remember because that's back. You remember when they used to play. Um, they used to play a cover of uh, Light My Fire by The Doors. And me being a teenager, I was fucking so starstruck and fucking Peter Steele. He was a Playgirl. <laughs> you still on it? Yeah. Jason's got that shit hanging on his wall. Right? <laughs> He's like, Peter Steele's yeah. dong? Fuck yeah, me. I was so right fucking was, uh, starstruck. It was a pre-episode, too. Or issue. And here's the thing, I was a fucking huge... <laughs> yes. I was a huge Doors fan as well. Because I'm unoriginal as fuck. <laughs> and, uh, you know what's unoriginal as fuck is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's a conversation for another day. Listen, <laughs> Steel Panther. So, Jason, if you could hear any song right now, what would it be? Um, it would be. <laughs> Stuck in a Closet with Vanna White by Al Yankovic. <laughs> you didn't even say weird. That's the best part. I know. That's how I roll. <laughs> what the fuck is that talking about? Al Yankovic. Here's a jam. Yes. That's Stuck my, in a closet. That's my piss being away. It's stuck in a closet with Van White by Night after night after night after night, alright. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Never had one lesson. I'm a person too, Bob, goddammit. <laughs> I can't remember what I was talking about. Have a name of something. Peter Still something. Yeah, something. Have a Peter Still story. Oh, he died right in front of me. And I, I was trying to get him back into the conversation. Yeah, he died in my arms. Did he really? Yeah. Why didn't you ever tell me that before? Because I fucking just made it, it was up a right personal now. Thought thing. about it right now. Oh. Yeah, you remember whenever Weird Al did that version of Love You to Death? It was called Love You to Bed. No. It was a combination of this and Kiss? No. Oh. Not at all. He did a cover of Black Number One, but it's called Crack Number One. No, he didn't. Yeah. No, he didn't. He did a cover of Christian Woman, it's called Sister Christian Woman. <laughs> That'd be awesome.
Well, there you go. The first edition of Drunk Talk here from Thunder Underground. Hopefully the last. No, it's it's becoming a new thing. Uh, God This damn is it. now so successful. I'm saying this ahead of Already? time. Already? Like, like I'm one of those, you know. Well, you're proud of your shit, Those artists you? that, you know, throw lyrics into their songs about how they're successful before they really are. I know? see. Like Kid Rock saying he went platinum seven times. <laughs> well, that was after he did. No, I thought. No, he said, I'm going platinum. And then he came back with American Badass and said, I went platinum. Or what? Oh, yeah, that's Seven right. Times. That's right. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. You would know you're the Kid Rock fan. That's true. I have Fucker. no shame. No shame. He's better than Green Day. Okay, anyways, <laughs> if this is your first time listening. That was Jason, JP, Justin from Egotastic Fun Time, and myself, Trent. Yes. And I was thinking if this did become a thing. We've got options out there. We've got Kevin Graham. We've yes, done we that with him before. We know that works. I think Jason Carroll would be a good That option. would be a good one. You know, because he knows his stuff, too. And, you know, he could beat you up halfway through it like he tends to do. Because he guys usually drink. does. I don't know why, but he really just really loves to rough me up. Yeah. <laughs> what if we got Dennis from Crane Technique with a few drinks in him? He, that guy's already hilarious without a drinks in him. I don't know. You wouldn't even need to put yeah, drinks in yeah. it. He's just so funny. I'm trying to think. Andy from Fist of Rage. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. These Definitely. are some options here, you know. Definitely. It's Sprout. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, when we had Sprout on the first time, I know he was he was drinking some whiskey, but yeah. he wasn't he wasn't turnt, as we like to say. God, you like you to like say, <laughs> quit fucking saying that shit. I'm going to see from now on out how many times I can fit that in our <sighs> conversation. No. Fucking shit, man. <laughs> Anyway, like you said, if this is your first time listening, thank you very much. TheThunderUnderground.com is our website. We're on all the social medias. Twitter is THNDRUNDR Ground. Instagram and Facebook are both The Thunder Underground. And YouTube is also at The Thunder Underground. Subscribe there. We've got all these podcasts on there, but we've also got reviews of albums and concerts. And then we've got a show called every album in a row that's right where we take an artist <clears throat> listen to their entire catalog from the first song to the last and then just talk about it and how it flows and we've done that with van halen pantera megadeth metallica guns and roses ozzy we've got motley crew on the way and kiss will be shortly after that yes so be on the lookout for those definitely we've got episodes coming soon from the band alter blood out of tulsa we've yes. recorded that We've also recorded one with Devin and Travis from the band The Devil You Adore, which is soon to be Claim Your Enemy. Yes. They're in the transition phase. That was a great one. That one's going to be fun, too. It's kind of like the drunk talk, but without being drunk. You know, yeah. We talked about everything imaginable, and it was great. <coughs> We've also got some other stuff coming up that I'm not going to say yet. That's I don't right. want to jinx anything. That's right. But go back in the archives, 117 episodes. We've had on... Several of these guys we've already mentioned, like the Devil You Adore, Scream Red Mutiny, Fist of Rage. I've had on other guys from around here, like Reliance Code and Driver and Rocket Science. The list goes on and on. We've had on national acts like Gene Simmons from Kiss. That's right. We just had Lips from Anvil. Yes. Night Demon. Entire uh, band. Yes. Oscar Cedarmon from Truck Fighters. That was a great one. That was a great one. We've had on the singer from He Is Legend. Recently, yeah. we also had on Eddie Valise from King. Yes. We've had on guys from Nonpoint, Avatar, Soil, Drowning Pool, Sons of Texas, Battlecross. Super Joint. Yes. I always forget to say that. Super Joint's great. And that, yes, they are. Steven Taylor, the bass player of Super Joint's got a great story, too. Yes. So go check that out and hear all about it. And he was one of the nicest dudes ever. Yeah. So looking forward to that, and Super Joint's coming back. We saw that in Arkansas, and yes. Super Joint's coming to Oklahoma City. I believe it's May 13th, and that's on a Saturday, so get your ass out there because it's got a great lineup. We've got Archon out of Oklahoma City, who we love, yes. and we're going to have Andy on here at some point soon, Yes, we hope. And then we're that's <coughs> also got Smoke Offering, right? Yes. Featuring Kyle Williams. And then... Anyway, Kyle Williams has been on this podcast as well. That's right. Go check that one out. Yeah. 
But anyway, just like I said, go back in the archives. It's all at soundcloud.com backslash thunder dash underground. But wait, 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 wait. You didn't even get all the whole, the whole super joint bill in. Oh, well, yeah. Child bite. The national. Which are phenomenal. Ha- yeah. The whole touring package. Battle like. cross. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that's a good bill. Yeah. I'm glad they did a second leg of it. Sorry. Go ahead. No. So yeah, you've got five killer bands and I think there's another band we're yeah. forgetting from Oklahoma that's on the bill as well. So anyway, yeah, that's a killer tour. Yes, it is. Child Bite, check them out. Yeah, yeah, they're fucking rad. Well, have we have we done it up for one seventeen? Yeah, no, one eighteen. Sorry. I, yeah, I think so. I think we've uh, we've worn out our welcome, probably. <laughs> All right. We'll be on the lookout for one nineteen early next week, and until next time. Ask Don Hanley about that shit. What the fuck's this doing in your playlist? I just want I put it on there to see what you'd say. And this is fucking not even like OG shit. This is fucking <laughs> that what that heaven song they do that he does. He did the heaven song. I don't know. This song, whatever this song is. This is end of the innocence. Oh, end of the innocence. What a stupid fucking. It's the end of the innocence. Shut the fuck up. Get that fucking nodules fucking certified out of your throat, you <laughs> fucker. <laughs> Fucking Don Hanley. Thunder Underground, y'all.